Hey folks, Zito here, hope you're well. Uh, so this week I actually had a chance to build this. It's my uh, little barrel outhouse build. Finally had a few weeks off of work fortunately and uh, yeah, caught a few days up at the property and was able to basically, you know, buy some spruce and piece it all together. Uh, lumber costs are roughly about six, seven hundred dollars. It's all built out of spruce. Um, when I put a poll up on Instagram actually about whether I should keep it as an outhouse or build it as something else, most people actually want me to use it as something else. So uh, kind of perplexed about that. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll use it as something else. Maybe I'll build it in another bunkhouse. More often than not, just because it's got that sauna type of look, everyone actually wants to be a, a sauna barrel. And um, when you look at cedar, I would be at least four times the cost of that. So, you know, in lumber alone, I figured you'd probably be at around $3,000 mark or something like that for cedar. Um, anyhow, more baby steps, and I figured I'd build this one first. Obviously, Richard was a huge help on this particular build. And uh, yeah, so we'll kind of go over the steps of what how it went down, and yeah, hope you enjoy. More to come. So for this particular build, we started out with four sheets of half-inch plywood. Um, these pieces of plywood essentially be used as our end caps of our barrel. To maximize the plywood, we actually decided to cut it to essentially the diameter of eight feet, which goes to the edge of each piece of uh, plywood there. Setting up a router that had essentially a four foot swing arm from the center, we scored the plywood to give us our approximate shape. From there, we would use the jigsaw, cut through the scoring uh, to have a circular shape. And then with the router, after that, we actually use that to clean up all the edges and have a really, really nice circle. From there, knowing that we wanted a flat base that consisted of roughly six two by sixes, and these ones were pressure treated, uh, we measured out the sizing required and traced slash cut uh, this into the base of our barrel. We then produced the frame that the barrels would be sitting on. Uh, this frame would be sitting on top of cement blocks uh, that were then leveled and stuff. Uh, but this essentially consisted of both pressure treated 2x6s and a few 2x4s. Uh, before throwing in those 2x4s, we actually treated them with some lifetime wood treatment uh, that we bought from Home Hardware. Once we had this particular frame built, we, uh, as mentioned, we threw them on the cinder blocks and leveled them by uh, drilling down footings as required. From there, we laid down our pressure treated floorboards, those six two by sixes, and uh, yeah, basically had the base that was ready to take on the end cap. Uh, but first, of course, we finished the end caps by reinforcing them with studs and also carving out our doorway for the front end cap. Just prior to putting on the end caps as well, I also cut out a few uh, circular window holes into the front and back of the end caps. I bought these circular doggy windows that were, uh, I got two windows for about $65 Canadian. Um, so that was kind of sweet and a fun accent essentially to this whole circular build. From there, we actually start the process of preparing our 40 or so eight foot two by sixes. We'd prepare them essentially by cutting a half inch dado into the ends of either sides of the board. Uh, these would essentially align our end caps to them and would give us, you know, we'd be able to pinch them into position uh, before screwing them in. So we would do that and we'd also actually drill pilot holes into each of the dados so that we would ensure that we had a straight hole for screws to go through that dado into the plywood and hold it into place. This would also be of course a temporary measure as we would have uh, large ratchets, three large ratchets holding everything in place afterwards. Once several of these particular boards were finally on, uh, we switched over to the roofing and the roof consisted of a two by eight pressure treated ridge beam we then attached two two-foot corrugated PVC uh, sheets to either side, which would kind of act as a, as a rain barrier, but also a see-through roof, essentially. We would sandwich it onto the 2x8 with a 1x4 up top. We sort of awkwardly then threw that up onto the end caps and kind of had it right up at the top there. 
We would then add shorts between the PVC and, and the end cap so that the ratchet straps would be able to ratchet on those instead of, you know, the, the PVC. And once we essentially had a solid fit all the way around with the shorts and the longs essentially on the end caps, um, we effectively had our shape and everything like that. We actually threw on another two sheets uh, on either sides there of the PVC just so that we kind of essentially had more of like an eight foot span of uh, clear plastic up top there. And I would overhang the uh, long boards on, the, on the either side there. So yeah, we essentially had a structure. Um, it still has to be protected. We're gonna do that with some uh, lifetime wood treatment there. And uh, yeah, pretty pumped about this one. So thanks so much for checking that out. Uh, there's more to come. We're basically gonna outfit it and of course finish the door on it. And then I got some fun ideas for how I'm actually going to, uh, to kind of decorate the front and stuff like that. So the structure is basically in place, which I'm loving. Uh, it's great for just even chilling in right now. I might even set up a piece of plywood in there and see if I can skate the damn thing and not kill myself or hurt myself too badly and stuff. So uh, yeah, more to come and uh, stoked. I finally have a place to poo. Peace.